So let's now move over to a discussion of VZV. So VZV stands for varicella zoster virus. Varicella is the old name for chickenpox and zoster is the old name for shingles. So this is the virus that causes both chickenpox and shingles. Now I'm actually going to begin with shingles because it's the one that I'm more familiar with because I work solely in adult medicine. I've never worked in pediatric medicine. The youngest people I see clinically are 17, 18 year olds. So chickenpox being an infection that primarily happens in children is not something that I'm actually that familiar with, but I am familiar with shingles. I see shingles a lot. Um, so I'll talk about shingles first and then I'll show you the pictures of chickenpox, even though that's kind of not the order to do it in, pathologically speaking, uh, but we'll do it in this order anyway. So I've googled here pictures of shingles. Um, let's see if which one I like best. This one actually that's kind of cut out is probably uh, a really good one. Unfortunately, we've only got the top uh, or the, yeah, the top of the image here. So it's very similar. In fact, I'll move to a different one. This is quite a good one. Um, it's very similar appearance to the hepatic skin infections that HSV1 and HSV2 cause. Again, you've got vesicular rash, all of these little things here. These are tiny little blisters that, as I say, we call vesicles. And they have these sort of golden appearances quite often. And they're sat upon a sort of wider area of injurated, red, swollen, inflamed skin. So often the classic appearance is that you get loads of these vesicles and they've all got sort of like a little sort of rim of red indurated tissue around them uh, and even more famous for the pattern of shingles is that it is dermatomal so only affects one dermatome so a dermatome is a portion of skin that is supplied by a single spinal root. So hopefully you know that our spinal column is made up of loads of vertebrae, one plonked on top of the other. And you have your spinal cord running down the middle, protected by this bony shell, which is these vertebrae, well, the spine. Um, and off from the spinal cord come loads of nerves, and these are called the spinal nerves. And one spinal nerve supplies an area of skin with sensation and that's called the dermatome. So this is, all this area of skin here is supplied by one spinal root that's coming off the spinal cord and then coming out of the spine uh, to supply the body. So the way this happens is the varicella zoster virus, once you've had it, you catch it in childhood and it causes chicken pox initially. Even though you get better and all the symptoms of chickenpox go away, the virus is never truly cleared from your body. Small amounts of it stay in your body for the rest of your life. And in particular, they hide away in the nerves, the spinal roots that come out of the nerves. Bizarre place for them to hide, but those are the cells they linger on in. They linger inside our nerves. It's really horrible. Uh, the cell bodies of the nerve cells, they live inside those. And for years and years and years, they sit there inactive and don't do anything, or rather they're trying to do something, but your immune system keeps on fighting and keeps them in check. If you ever go through a period of weakness, however, so if your body's immune system is distracted, so if you're really unwell for some other reason, let's say you've got a really severe infection, you catch pneumonia maybe, or you've got a really bad bladder infection, or maybe you get really badly sunburned, for example, all of these things could massively distract your immune system, massively weaken you physiologically, and then your immune system can't continue the fight with the VZV because it's too busy dealing with your other problems, and then you can get uh, this virus starting to replicate again and cause an active infection and it comes out of these nerves basically that it's been hiding in for years and then ends up just activating in one spinal nerve uh, and affects a, a single portion of skin it ends up infecting the skin that it can get to from that single spinal nerve which is a dermatome like this so shingles has a classic dermatomal appearance and it's got the same sort of rash as the hepatic skin infections hepatic skin infections caused by hsv1 and 2 are not dermatomal like this they're just a random splodge of skin which the virus has spread to uh, shingles on the other hand is a dermatome in this incredible way so you can google the dermatomes uh, and you can get up pictures that show for each of the different spinal nerves at all the levels, which bit of skin they cover. Uh, and 
often if you have a patient where you think it's shingles, you can get that graph up and you can compare and you can work out which spinal nerve you actually think the reactivation of the virus has occurred in to produce this rash. Now, if you don't treat shingles, and it can be treated with a cyclovir, and we'll talk about the dosing in a moment, but if you don't treat it, it does get better by itself. However, if you do treat it with a cyclovir, usually it gets better slightly quicker, and also it reduces the risk that you will get a horrible complication of having shingles, which is something called post-hepatic neuralgia. So I've written that down here, so post-hepatic neuralgia. So this is a chronic pain condition that can follow shingles infections. So the way this works is in shingles, the infection has reactivated from where it was lying dormant in one of the spinal nerves. So if we take this example, there's a spinal nerve that supplies this portion of skin and it had tiny amounts of the virus lying dormant in its cells. Now they have the infection has reactivated there and loads of the virus is now present in all of those nerve cells and is spitting out onto the skin that that, the, that spinal nerve supplies and is now infecting this portion of skin also. Go back to the nerve, however, forget the skin. The nerves are all infected. The nerve cells of that spinal nerve are all infected and they sometimes don't take that infection very well. They can end up being damaged permanently by that infection and the immune response that occurs in response to that infection to try and clear it afterwards. And when nerve cells are damaged, it can lead to a type of pain called neuropathic pain that is different from nociceptive pain. So if you injure yourself, let's say you break a bone, that produces nociceptive pain. The nerves in the damaged region are all being activated and they are sending signals up to the spine and then up to the brain saying feel pain and you feel that pain there. If instead you actually damage nerves in some way as in which is going to occur in this shingles infection, some of those nerves will be pain nerves themselves and it triggers off a very different type of pain when you injure a nerve itself rather than injuring some tissue that's supplied by a nerve. So the type of pain that you get in neuropathic pain feels different. It feels burning sensation people often describe or um, tingling sensation, the pins and needles sensation. And, it, you know, we've all had pins and needles, but only lasting for a few seconds and then it clears. Imagine having that sensation, but it just goes on and on for hours and hours and hours. That's what neuropathic pain is like. Or electric shock sensations, all of these free descriptions, burning sensations, pins and needles sensations, electric shock sensations. So if we go back to shingles, the nerve that supplies this portion of skin has been injured potentially by that infection. And the nerve cells, some of them will be pain cells pain nerve cells and they will be supplying the skin and if they have been damaged it can then end up producing a chronic pain condition and you feel the pain in this area which is supplied by those pain nerves and it feels often like burning sensation is the classic description of post-heretic hepatic neuralgia but it can also feel the other types of neuropathic pain sensations the pins and needles sensations or the electric shock sensations so sometimes what happens after shingles infections is people, even after the rash is gone, so all of this is cleared, the skin looks normal again, they can get pain in this region for months, maybe years, maybe for the rest of their life. And it's a neuropathic type pain. Often they describe it as it feels like it's on fire. It feels like it's burning all day long, all the time. Uh, and that's a condition called post-hepatic neuralgia. And that's not good. That's not a nice thing to happen to you. Um, so one of the reasons we treat shingles is to try and prevent post hepatic neuralgia occurring. And there is evidence that if we treat with acyclovir, we can reduce the risk that you will get post hepatic neuralgia after your shingles. Because the reality is that even if you treat shingles with acyclovir, it only shortens the duration of the actual rash by days. So this might last for weeks before it clears. And if you actually look at how much acyclovir shortens the period for which the rash is present, it's, it's 
days. It's pretty feeble. You know, you don't take the acyclovir and next morning the rash has disappeared. It's not that effective uh, at actually shortening, shortening the duration of the rash. But it does have evidence that it reduces the risk that you will get post-hepatic neuralgia afterwards.